mental health is very much overlooked within athletes because we're shown as like strong and powerful and always happy and always smiling and there's, there's no way that there can ever be a bad day. But for me, I had like three bad years. <laughs> In 2018, Mame Baini became the first Black woman ever to qualify for the U.S. speed skating team. But she almost didn't make it back to the Games this year. After struggling with a coach, she found abusive. This time around, qualifying for the Games means a lot more just because I went through so much. This is the very first time I've ever like been in a very deep hole. It got pretty bad. I didn't want to talk to anyone. It got to the point where I didn't want to skate anymore, so being able to cross the line and make the team felt really, really good, and um, I'm extremely proud of myself. So I started skating when I was five, figure skating first when I was five, and then my figure skating coach, who was also a speed skating coach, she told my dad that I was going too fast for figure skating, I should try speed skating, um, and I did. Turns out that I really like it. <laughs> Mommy's an athlete known for her bright energy and personality. At least, that's her attitude until she starts skating. I can just leave all my problems out on that ice. I think it's a flip of a switch kind of thing, you know? Like, as soon as I'm on the line, I'm just like, oh, all right, I'm here now, and I gotta do what I gotta do. By the time she hits the starting line, she's become her alter ego, a personality she's named Anna Digger. Yeah, so Anna is an email address. <laughs> um, Anna Digger, I made the email address when I was like eight years old. I was talking to a teammate about it before Olympic trials in 2018, and she was just like, how funny would it be if that was like your alter ego because you always look so mad whenever you're skating, like you look so focused and serious. When you see her in almost any other setting, the smile is painted across her face, and then when you see her at the line, you see a look of intensity. In 2018, U.S. speed skating hired someone new to train as short track athletes, a Dutch coach named Wilma Boomstra, and Mame felt her skating environment change radically. There's definitely a limit of like pushing. Like if you push your athletes to be great, they're gonna be great. But if you push your athletes to like hate themselves and like hate skating and hate whatever they do in life, if like a coach is like telling you, you kind of suck right now, and it's just like, wait, what? No, you should not be like saying that. You should be like encouraging me. I guess my triggering point was just basing my feelings on how I did in practices and stuff like that. And so that is just like not healthy. An investigation by U.S. Speed Skating from last year found that Boomstra used bullying behavior in the form of shaming athletes in front of others and name calling. That came after several skaters filed formal complaints accusing her of abuse. On her end, Boomstra has disputed that characterization. In a 2021 interview with Dutch media, she said she's simply been honest with skaters about their shortcomings. But that approach was a blow to Mame's confidence. I did not want to get out of bed. Anna was very much, like, harbored in. A growing body of research shows that cutting athletes down doesn't make them perform better. Actually, it impairs cognitive functioning, weakens team dynamics, and leads many to anxiety or depression. And yet, most athletes continue to experience some kind of abuse. Athletes, over the course of a career, have many different coaches. Any kid that's made it to high school may have already had six, eight different coaches. Hopefully, they've had more positive experiences than negative. But I think at almost every level, they've experienced a coach who was either physically or psychologically abusive. That trauma can lead to other things in life, exacerbated depression or anxiety or other mental health concerns that, that, that we have, right? David Weirich and Jeff Milroy work for the Institute to Promote Athlete Health and Wellness at the University of North Carolina, Greensboro. In 2020, they partnered with the U.S. Center for Safe Sport, a nonprofit formed to protect athletes in the Olympic pipeline in the wake of the Larry Nassar sexual abuse scandal. They surveyed nearly 4,000 athletes of all levels about their experiences with various types of abuse. In their preliminary study, around 80% of the people they surveyed reported experiencing some marker of psychological harm in their sport. So many coaches coach the way that they were coached. We have to get to a point where as a society, we're not going to tolerate the abusive behavior. There's going to be real consequences to it, or it will perpetuate itself. 
David and Jeff have partnered with a program that's worked with over 100,000 coaches to rethink how they measure success. They train coaches to measure success by athletes' growth, an approach called transformational coaching, rather than by wins or transactional coaching. That means more encouraging and personalized communication to build trust and empower athletes in and outside of the sport. Let me give you an example of a real experience that I had in working with some high school athletes that were members of their high school girls basketball team. One of the assistant coaches told the girls on that team, all of you are losers and your record proves it. Now that is about as transactional of a statement as I've ever heard. That will be a sport-related memory that never leaves them. We're not looking to the athletes for the answers, but really a top-down, let's, let's start with the administrators. How are they setting expectations and goals and objectives for their team? And how are those balanced with human development? Even the coaches that we would label as abusive, most of them got into it for the right reasons. They wanted to be a positive influence on kids and young people. They wanted to teach the sport that they love the right way and encourage people to participate in it. Talk with your athletes, you know, ask your athletes what they want. Um, Cause guess what? Surprise, surprise, the athletes want to win too. It may seem self-evident that players who feel supported will perform better, but there's data to back it up. Studies are beginning to show a positive correlation between transformational coaching and athletes' confidence in their abilities, cooperation with teammates, and sense of fulfillment. It got to a point where I was just like, I am not getting out of bed right now. Like I am in a very depressive um, mode and mindset right now. And it's not good for me as an athlete or even me as a human. So I needed to ask for help. In 2020, Mame started seeing a sports psychologist. And crucially, she began working with a different coach, moving from the national team to a less elite developmental program called the FAST team. That is the one thing that I regret not doing earlier just because the first day I was on the fast team skating with them, it just, it was just like I could breathe, you know, and I, and I didn't have to go to, to training, like dreading it. The coach that was on the national team did not really provide me with the help that I needed to get better as a skater. And I knew that if I moved over to the fast team, the coach there would definitely do that and um, treat me like a human, which is always nice. In March, 2021, US speed skating fired coach Boomstra based on performance. And Mame has returned to training with the national team. When we spoke to her days after qualifying for the Olympics, she said Anna Digger has re-entered her life. Actually, this weekend was the first time in a, such a long time where I felt like my old self and I felt like I, I was like fighting, you know, like I was fighting to, to be first and not like settle for second or third or fourth or anything like that. Like, and so that was like a really good feeling and I definitely felt like Anna was like in there. Outside of skating, whenever Anna does come out is whenever I'm like taking a stance on like a situation or a problem in the world. The first time I ever posted about Black Lives Matter was when George Floyd passed away. That's definitely when Anna came out. And I would post like almost every single day in the month about resources that people can go and support Black Lives Matter. I've realized that I, I thrive off of knowing that people support me and love me. Whether or not I do well or not, they're still there because they want the best for me and they, they just love me for who I am as a person and not as a skater.